Hello there, welcome to Grand Old Team TV. Um, I'm with the greatest goalkeeper in the world ever, Mr. Neville Southall. First of all, before I start, just a, a quick thank you to the Winslow um, and thanks to Mersey memorabilia and also Dave, whose book, The Everton Domingo Sermons by the Reverend, is on sale now. Um, so, yes, Nev, I, we had to start this again because I was a bit loud before. Is this is this okay now, mate? Just so I know. Just, just a little bit lower. Good, good. And also a quick shout out to Barbara, who's Dave's mum as well. I get told off if I don't yeah, do that. Yeah. So, um, it's an evening with Neville Southall tonight, Nev. Uh, you get a lot of love off the Evertonians. How does that make you feel when you come back and, and interact with them again? Best fans in the world? Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, it's, it's yeah, great yeah, because yeah. if they take to you, they take to you. If they don't, they don't. But there's usually a good reason why they don't is you usually don't try hard enough. Is that what it is? <laughs> I think so. And nobody could ever accuse you of that, I don't think, Nev, right? Well, you've got to try. That's the whole point of uh, playing, isn't it? Is to try and make, make yourself the best you can be. And I think you can't, you can't kid these people. And I think you know, over the years, people have seen people who have burst onto the scenes, lasted four games and then gone. So people see through them. It's, it's a city where you, you can't you can't do that. You've just got to come in. You've got to be at it all the time. Once you see it through, you see loads of frauds. <laughs> You've seen loads of frauds in the past. So, yeah, they, they know they know a player when they see one. Do they deserve a little bit more than what they're getting now? From the current batch? Well, I'm not sure what they're getting, actually. Um, no, uh, neither am I, to be fair. No, I, I've... <laughs> I love working football, but even that's taking a piss. So, at the moment, it's too slow. Um, but I do think it come, it come, everything comes from the top. The whole philosophy, the whole thing is driven by the top, and that's the board. And I still think they're, they're still unambitious, or they're not ambitious enough. They don't, they don't make enough statements to the people. They haven't come out at the start of the season and said they want to win the league. People will say, well, like, why should you? Well, Leicester try it. Leicester won the league. Yeah. There's no reason why people can't win the league, but try and win it. Give the give the place a, a clear direction. You know, if they can, like they said before, six and tenth is good. It's it's not. Go to win the league, and then we can all go that way straight away. If you don't give any clear signals, it happens. What happens now is that you drift a bit, and you not probably as focused. The manager's trying his best to, to push him into one direction, and. But if you, if you look around the ground and you look at all the messages that come out, yeah, we're getting a new ground, great. So if we get a new, if we had a new ground next week, it'd be our fault. Mm. You know, you've got to fill the ground. So first of all, you've got to win some. To win some, you've got to be ambitious, um, and then you've got to make sure that the team plays to its full potential. At the moment, it's not uh, for various reasons, I suppose. Um, we've got a new new group of players come in. Uh, we've got people who were there before who won't play as many games, who won't be very happy, maybe they'll have an influence. It looks to definitely if there's some players in there who don't want to be there and don't want to do what they're supposed to do, you probably need to cut them. There's people in there who, are, who just come in who, who need given time. Um, if you don't give them time, then you can't expect to be all we will be, you know, all, whatever the money you signed. I don't think he had Rooney and Sigerson down as playing every single week. I think that's the reason why he bought in two of them. I think he was stuck with the striker because obviously he thought he had somebody. Um, but I think the whole place needs a, a, an attitude and a philosophy change, and it's got to be driven. It's, it's got to be driven from the top. I, I, I do like the manager, I, and if you got rid of him tomorrow, you're going to bring in somebody. All right, people can argue you play people in the right positions, but you know they're still not going to have a striker. They're still they're still going to have to wait till January to do anything. So. Yeah, you could argue, I suppose, that he'd have a bit of time to see who's let him down, but there's, there's so many players settling down. It won't, it won't be till the end of the season where you get a clear, a clear view on most of them. Mm. I mean, I've been impressed with Wayne Rooney's attitude and his bravery, even though he's not doing fantastically well. He keeps getting on the ball. And he keeps, you know, he does give it away a lot, but he gets on the ball more than anybody else, I would have thought. Yeah. Uh, we just need to play, like the manager wants him to play, a high tempo, and go and close the ball down and, and with a bit of attitude. And at the moment, we're playing walking football. Which makes it easy for the opposition. You mentioned there that you know the attitude from the top down, and um, there's been a few calls on Twitter for you to have a role at the club, Nev. Um, you ever think that might be a possibility? And, and if you were, let's just pretend, for example, Everton were gonna you know give you a role. What kind of role would you would you want if you were going to have one? Well, hell's got it. I'm freezing, frozen over here, as it so. There's no chance of that. I just thought I'd have to ask because a lot of people talking about it on Twitter at the moment. You know, you and Reedy, the way you talk, instilling that that winning mentality. But but that, that should be done when you're a kid. As soon as you come through the door, that should be ingrained in a place. Mm. That should have been ingrained in a place since we won the last league. 
whenever we've got this group of players now, I'm hoping that the chief scout is out looking for better. So as soon as you sign somebody in any position, you're off out looking for a better player than him, what you've already got. We've stood still for too long. You know, I know we've made little baby steps, but uh, you need to keep on going. And, and, uh, and, you know, there's an argument for me that I would rather sign one world-class player than five that aren't world-class. Yeah. Uh, for me, and it's, it's, it's just really, when you walk through the door, it should be ingrained that you train every day to your maximum. And I think the, it's hard at the moment because you're looking at people who are trying to settle in. I like Ronald Coleman. I think he's, I think he's a sensible fella. I think he knows what he wants. I think there's things hampering him. And one of the things is upstairs. Mm. It's upstairs. Do, do you know what it's like to be an Evertonian as, as, a, as an owner? Is he there all the time driving him? I, I don't think he is. Everything's got to be done right. No, the fellow, the fellow who makes the tea in the dressing room, it's got to be right. The fellow who sells you the pie at half time, it's got to be in the attitude that you're going to win something. Everybody in that ground has to go to the ground, believing that they can win, and believing that they can win the league. If, if you haven't got that, what have you got? Yeah, you've got a team of people who are drifting, and you, you've got to get that instilled. You've got to instill into all of them, everybody that goes into the ground, everybody that works for the club. But number one counts. Number two is a waste of time. And everything's got to be driven to that one bit where you go one, 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 one. No. If you're writing a letter to a fan, it's got to be the best letter that's ever written. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember we, we had a conversation before, didn't we, over the phone, and you said the same thing. That now I know we've Dave just come over, so I think um, we haven't got too much time with you, although I could although I could speak to you for decades. No, it's fine, Dave. We, we won't be too much longer. Uh, I just wanted to maybe mix it up a little bit. Everything you said there makes completely no sense, by the way. But... Um, just wanted to ask about some of the, the players that you played with, just quickly, quick fire, and if you can give me maybe like a sentence on on each of those players. Fancy that? So some of the lads that you played with, or or were you know were managed by in in the first case. So Howard Kendall, sum them up in one sentence for me, Ned. Gentlemen, gentlemen, and uh, somebody who knew football inside out. Okay, uh, Pat Van der Hal. Mental. Who knew not much about football? <laughs> no, no, knew nothing about football. <laughs> At times, uh, incredibly shy man, but. Obviously, people, really, yeah, but people don't realize that. Okay, um, Reedy, Reedy, proper footballer, proper skelter. Yeah, um, this was an interesting one. Gary Lineker, uh, Gary, good player, um, scored loads of goals, didn't train. Really, didn't train, hardly ever trained. He had his bad toes sat in the bath most of it. <laughs> and scored long ago so maybe the, the idea is that we can get a strike we put him in the bath I assume that was the opposite to Reedy then was he the contrast between those yeah, two yeah but, but Gary had one train Monday normally do a little bit Tuesday have Wednesday off come in Thursday maybe do a jog Friday sit in the bath Saturday score that trick can't knock it fancy that no you can't uh, Andre Kinchalsikas obviously this was in the later days of your career at Everton great fella yeah great fella um had a sense of humour, which I was quite surprised at because he's Russian. <laughs> yeah, normally it's just like dead, deadpan steel. You're not allowed to laugh here, are you? No. <laughs> not in them days, mate. When they're allowed to laugh unless, unless somebody come round and shut your curtains. <laughs> and uh, finally, Duncan Ferguson. Again, as shy as Pat. Yeah? Yeah. And hopefully he will probably need to go away from Everton at some stage to make success on his own to come back and manage the club. Cool. Okay. And one final uh, just word, because I, I was listening to the conversation we had before, Nev, and you were talking about Kuman and you were saying, you know, he's a steady, slow guy and, and you know, it's going to take a bit of time with him. If you if you got to that stage yet where you're wondering whether they should pull the plug or would you give him a little bit more time? Well, I don't see why they should pull the plug um, because they employed him. Yeah. They both employed him. They, he must have showed him their, his plans. They must go along with their plans. And it's about time they showed some balls and stuck with one person. And if, if that, he's their man, then they must do everything they can to back him. That means coming out in the press, that means coming out on the radio. I know we did a little bit, but but even more so and say, look, this fella ain't going. We're going to get to January, we're going to buy a couple of people. We'll hopefully see a change after Christmas and we'll review it at the end of the season. And if you don't like it, well, that's our decision. You can blame us. Good stuff. Neville Southall, as impressive as always. Enjoy your night tonight. Thanks for speaking to Grand Old Team TV. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. <laughs>